All right, we are now officially into the uh, the holiday season, the December holiday season. Even though it's still technically November, but yeah, um, when okay, so I understand when people say you know there's a you know some people say happy Christmas, some say happy holidays, and people will get upset. And I get it. There's more than one holiday in December. Not everyone celebrates Christmas. It's like not everyone celebrates Hanukkah. Or like any other... There's, there's a lot of holidays in December. Just the biggest one is Christmas. So, yeah. Throughout the month of December, I will be... I also call it holiday films. Like, I'll be doing holiday films throughout the month of December. Much like I did for November. But you'll see a theme. They are all Christmas movies. Except for this one, technically. I remember watching this movie when it came out. It was marketed as a Christmas movie. I remember it as a Christmas movie. I would watch it every Christmas for for like three years. I mean, it came out in 2012. So, yeah. I only saw it for like three Christmases. In fact, it came out November 21st, 2012. So, yeah, it was marketed as a Christmas movie. And so and it, it kind of looks like a Christmas movie. You know, with you know it has Santa Claus and it has snow and and all of that. But um yeah, I watched it just now for the first time in many years and I realized it's not a Christmas movie. It is not uh, because it says several times throughout the film, and it's a major plot point, this film takes place at Easter. So, technically, this is an Easter movie. I'm starting the Christmas season off with an Easter movie. <sighs> anyway, Rise of the Guardians. As I said, it came out in 2012. It was it's a DreamWorks animated film. It was directed by Peter Ramsey, based on a screenplay by David Lindsay Abair. Yeah, it was based on the book series uh, Guardians of the Guardians of Childhood and the short film The Man in the Moon by William Joyce. I did not know that it was based on a book. Honestly, I'm. Kind of surprised. Now I kind of want to read that. But it all—it has the, the voices of Chris Pine, Alec Baldwin, Jude Law, Isla Fisher, Hugh Jackman. Yeah, it's, gonna, it's, a, it's an all-star cast. This is, this is say that. <laughs> uh, and so when this film came out, I, I was kind of laughing at it I, before I even saw it. I was making fun of it because I thought this, you know, they're just, they're taking this way too seriously. This is not, yeah, this is like taking like Christmas and Easter Bunny and turning them into like super serious figures. But then when I saw it for the first time all those years ago, yeah, this. I was very, very impressed. This is a very good movie. <laughs> yeah, that's my review. It's a very good movie. Because it, you know, it does take all these things. They could have made it very silly. And I think they they easily could have. Like, take the Santa Claus. That's a good movie. That's a good, well, the first one is a very good movie. The second one, it, okay, let's just say it this way. The Santa Claus is a great movie. It's a classic. The Santa Claus 2 is a decent movie. The Santa Claus 3, The Escape Clause, is a movie. 
<laughs> and what did they introduce in the second movie? The it was like a uh, like league of imaginary beings or whatever they called it. I don't remember, but it was like a council of like the tooth fairy and all of them. And it was just super goofy and silly. And I didn't like it. So obviously when that's kind of where my mind was when I first heard of this movie and they took that idea and made it really good. I actually, I actually really liked this. Another thing I was thinking while watching this for the first time is this should make a really good game, a really good video game. And I was going to say that I never got that game that I always wanted. But I, I look, I'm looking now, and apparently there was a game. It was released two days after the movie. On PS3, Xbox 360, Wii, Nintendo DS, and Nintendo 3DS. Oh, well, and apparently it also came out on the Wii U. Huh. Now I kind of want to play it. Wait, what was the reception? 40, uh, Metacritic has uh, 43 out of 100. For the Xbox 360 version. And a 43, uh, 48 out of 100 for the Wii U version? The Wii U version got a higher rating than the Xbox 360 version? Uh... Well, they couldn't get the original cast to come back, it looks like. So, like, it doesn't look like I'm able to play this game right now, obviously. It's not available on Switch. I only have a Switch. Um, I want to play this game. I, I don't know anything about it except that it exists, and that is enough for me. I wish I knew about it sooner. Anyway. I always felt like, you know, at the end, it was kind of implying that there was going to be a sequel. Just... I don't know. It felt like off to further adventure adv adventures. But I look at it on the Wikipedia. It says that there is a, p a, p a possible sequel after the release of the film. The creators of Rise of the Guardians expressed hope that the strong average grade of A would be given to the film by audiences surveyed by CinemaScore, and enthusiastic word of mouth would gather support of a chance to make a sequel or two. Author and co-producer of the series, William Joyce, also mentioned in March 2013 that he was still in talks about a sequel with DreamWorks Animation. Ah, that was ten years ago. So, probably not gonna happen. Because this is one I don't hear talked about. Like, the first year it came out, for like the first year, like that first, because like, like I said, it came out in 2013. I didn't watch it in theaters. I did watch it. I like rented it online. But I watched it. And I watched it for, uh, Christmas 2013 and 14. And that's around, like, everyone was talking about, not everyone, but it was still in the public conscious. And by 2015, Nobody was talking about it, and I actually I asked some of my coworkers. Uh, I already know what movies I'm going to cover. I've already made the title logos for all the movies I'm covering for December because I wanted to plan it out. Because there were so many movies I wanted to do. I was, I was thinking about doing two episodes a week just to cover them all, and that wouldn't even cover half of them. But no, it's hard enough to do this plus still do digressor. So I'm, I I just gotta hope that I'm still doing this next Christmas. <laughs> if if for whatever reason I give up this podcast in 2013, I will do an annual. I will still do it in December just to do the, those Christmas movies because I there's so it was hard to narrow it down to these. The next episode is episode 20. And so that, you know what that means? It's a double episode, and I already know what it is. Obviously. Yeah. But <laughs> I. 
so anyway, I asked my coworkers if they had heard of this movie, and uh, like one of the other movies I'm going to cover, nobody had heard of this one. There's two movies I'm going to cover for December that I wasn't sure if people remembered. There was this one, and then um, episode 21, and I wasn't sure. And there was one person who remembered episode 21. Which is kind of upsetting because both are great movies. <laughs> I will get to that in uh, two weeks. And it was kind of lucky that Christmas falls when it does because I I started doing episodes. Originally, I was planning on doing Casablanca on Wednesdays because that's my day off. But also, Sundays are my day off. And it just kind of defaulted into doing it on Sunday. I didn't even plan it. I was going to do every other Wednesday, Digressor, Casablanca, Digressor, Casablanca, and now I just I do this on Sunday. Well, as luck would have it, Christmas is on a Sunday. So my Christmas episode is my Christmas episode. <laughs> yeah. But I'm st- I'm not really talking about the movie. This is the wrong podcast for this. I This isn't the Digressor. I shouldn't digress. Any way. I am, again, I just, uh, I'm not good at talking. I'm good about talking about the movie, but not about the movie. Uh, oh, this movie is great. It's really imaginative, and it's kind of dark, and it has the emotional parts. And I wasn't expecting it. It's really good. But it's like, talk about the themes and the other stuff. And I don't know. I, I, <laughs> I like that it gave these, you know, these classical characters that everybody knows and, like, reinvent them. It kind of reinvented, like, the whole mythos and everything. Like, uh, whenever they're in the North Pole, they, uh, th- like, Jack Frost is walking through, um, like, Santa's, like, workshop and there's yetis building toys. And he was like, I thought that was the elves' job. And he, uh, Santa goes, oh, yeah, make them think that. I mean, well, let them think that. And then it showed a couple of elves. The elves in this were like the minions of the movie. Because, you know, back then, even now, I guess, there had to be some minions character. And they uh, showed the, thought the movie, like, there's elves, like little elves, like basically triangle-shaped. And they're just like, basically like the comic relief, because they're always funny. And it's like, he, uh, Santa was like, yeah, let them think that. And then it showed a, an elf wrapped in Christmas lights, and he gets shocked. And then Santa was like, yeah, keep up the good job, buddy. You're doing great. <laughs> uh, but because of the Yetis being the helpers, there was a running gag throughout this film. I laughed every time. <laughs> I had actually forgotten about it, where uh, this, uh, this one Yeti... Uh, and I think it happens three times in throughout the movie where this Yeti is like working on a toy and somebody walks by, Santa walks by and is like, oh, I don't, it's, this one's red. I wanted them in green. And then like the Yeti looks over at this massive pile, this massive uh, collection he had just finished. He's like, ah, <laughs> yeah, it's funny uh, to me. I find it funny. But yeah, like um, one of the things I kind of made fun of the movie for whenever I first heard about it was uh, I saw the, the the poster for it, and there's Santa with the sword. Santa's holding a sword, and I was like, "That's just messed up. Why would Santa hold a sword? That doesn't even make sense." And they got like this very serious looking Easter bunny holding a boomerang. I was like, "This is silly. This is gonna be stupid." Then I watch it, and it's like. Why doesn't Santa always have a sword? <laughs> and of course the Easter Bunny is Australian. I don't know. Like All the choices they made just kind of made sense for the characters they gave them. I love that the Tooth Fairy was like a giddy fangirl the whole time. Of like, of like Jack Frost. And she's like, oh, it's you with all of your teeth. <laughs> and she's like, so she's funny and like lighthearted the whole time. And Sandman, like, they didn't have to make his character silent, but they did. 
And it, for some reason, it just makes sense. All the choices they made for these characters, it, I mean, on paper, it sounds random, but like watching it in context of the story, it's like, oh, it makes sense. In fact, it probably would have been more convenient just to have Sandman talk because there was, there's a couple of scenes where because he doesn't talk, it, it kind of leads to moments like the the moon is also a character the man in the moon he's trying to talk to them and he also doesn't talk he's just shining down and sandman's trying to get their attention but everyone's like arguing and so like he's like sandman keeps like trying to signal to everybody and they they could have had him talk like maybe like maybe like a jay inside the bob thing where like silent bob does talk it's just very rare and they could have had him like guys like oh the rare time Manny speaks or Sandy I think Manny was the man in the moon Sandy was the Sandman they could have been like oh Sandy spoke <laughs> or something but because he didn't speak it just kind of added to his character I don't know why <laughs> and, uh, it was kind of silly that they had the the Easter Bunny being like this very serious character, but again, it also kind of worked. The the biggest example where I thought this easily could have not worked, there was a, a moment where uh, he's like, "I'm not a kangaroo. I'm a bunny, the Easter Bunny." It's like really gruff and serious, and I'm like. Wow, this this very easily could have been really silly and over the top, but it's like just the right amount of, like, I don't know, like it's with like seriousness where you like take it seriously, but also realize like I don't know. I um again, like I said, that this could have easily been a video game, and like I just found out it was. I'd never played it, so I don't know. And like when I'm watching this, it's like. I would love to explore these worlds because they go to uh, like the Tooth Fairy's realm and they go to like the Easter Bunny's realm and all that. And it's like, I would really like to explore these in a game. And speaking of it being a game, like there's literally a moment where Jack Frost levels up. And, like while I'm watching it, I'm like, this is the leveling up part. Like, he's leveling up in front of our eyes. This How is this not a game? Like, some movies you watch, and you're like, oh, they put this scene in here for the video game. Like, uh, Journey to the Center of the Earth, or I think it was Journey to the Center of the Earth, one of those with, like, Josh Hutcherson, where they were, start, they were trying to make that into a series, and I think they only did two movies. There was a scene in one of those where he literally was platforming, and I was like, yeah, they're going to have a game for this. This They made this scene just for the video game. And, yeah, that's that's what I got from this. That's it. Like, it felt... There were scenes that it felt like it was for the video game, but also, like, oh, this is in context. It makes sense. Like, why this happened the way it did. I don't want to give a whole lot of spoilers. Like, I feel like I've, I've said a lot of details about the movie, but, like, none of it's really been spoilery. So, like, I'm not going to say, like, what happens in, like, especially at the end. But I want to touch on the villain who was Pitch Black, or the Boogeyman. And, yeah, like, the the villain definitely could have been silly and campy. Like, this was a kid's movie. And they could have made him like, really wacky and like lighthearted and silly for the kids, but he was legitimately creepy. Like he was pretty much monochrome, like black and white the whole time. He was kind of like Gore the God Butcher and Thor: Love and Thunder, where like the only th color in his, like the only color on him in most parts was his eyes. They were kind of yellowy, and. Yeah, like, you, they, they, there's a kids movies with villain, like, with villains, so it's not every kids movie has a villain, for example, Inside Out, where, uh, I actually made some people upset, I said Joy was the antagonist, she wasn't the villain, Joy was the antagonist, and the hero, it makes sense in context, but anyway, 
a lot of these kids movies that have villains make them not really threatening or they make them like one note where like they're just evil for the sake of being evil or they were slighted by something small that's like well now they're just being petty but this one like he basically has the same story as jack frost it's just they both reacted differently and so they're watching and like there's moments in here where it's like oh jack frost could have taken the same route as pitch black but he didn't and that's like this is the difference between these two characters is they both went through similar things but one went this way and the other went that way and yeah like i i hope there's a sequel uh and especially if he comes back it's kind of implied that if there's a sequel he'll be back because like again no spoilers um I'm I'm not gonna say like what happens to him, but in a, again I will say this is a kids movie so happy ending. Speaking of the ending though, like I do like the ending. It's just it had kind of a Return of the King vibe to it, where like you can tell the movie didn't want to end. Like the movie wrapped up and it's just like, all right, come on, end. And it's like the characters saying bye to each other, bye, running after the thing, and like, bye, and then it's like okay. And, oh, there's there's an epilogue. There's a mid credit scene that I'm I'm glad they made it a mid credit scene and not like tacked on to the end before the credits. And it it does like further the story. It's not important. Uh but it it is at the same time because <laughs> As I'm watching it, I'm thinking it kind of implies uh, something. And I don't want to spoil. If I say what it is, it would spoil what happens at the end. But, like, it kind of implies that, well, basically, the put the mid-credits was like, oh, uh, I think they did the mid-credits so that people didn't assume something bad happened to these characters it's like, oh, okay, this is what happened to them. They're okay. And it was just kind of a funny thing with that. But anyway, yeah, that is Guardians of the... Wait, no. Um... <laughs> wow. I just... Yesterday I watched Guardians of the Galaxy Holiday Special, so... The Rise of the Guardians of the Galaxy. Ha. Ah. <laughs> but it was funny that I'm saying Guardians of the Galaxy when I'm trying to say Rise of the Guardians. Because when I was telling someone that I was trying to watch R Guardians of the Galaxy Holiday Special, I kept saying Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. So, everything just... I, I'm just, just... I have too many things to remember, okay? Leave me alone. <laughs> But yeah, that is where I'm going to end this episode. I I am actually looking forward to I might actually pre-record these episodes because like I I'm wanting to watch these movies. There's a lot of holiday films that I'm wanting to watch and but like especially the ones I chose to re to to cover and I'm wanting to just, I'm wanting to watch them now. So I might go ahead and record them all like in one day just so that it's like i can continue watching because i if i know if i if i wait then i'll change like i have my mindset i finally have my mindset what i want to review what i want to cover because it's end of review and if i wait then it's like oh it's going to change but i've already made the, the titles this the nah <laughs> anyway um yeah <laughs>